Now, Darren and Anita with your Grand Strand Artist Spotlight. All right, folks, I'm on the phone with Greg Perry, songwriter, producer, singer with the Holland Dozier Holland Invictus Hot Wax Days. Uh, Greg, how you doing? We're doing great. Absolutely great. I tell you, you know, out in L.A., you guys have got the, the warm, hot weather, and we're here on the East Coast, and we still have the 39-degree weather. Man, I, we need to switch or something. You need to b- <laughs> blow a little of that our way or something. I feel for you, but it's, it's really great. It's a, it's a different kind of thing spending Christmas out here, and it's 80 degrees. Yeah, well, do, you, do you put lights on the trees and all that kind of stuff? <laughs> oh, yeah, we put lights on the trees, and, <laughs> yes. and, and we, we enjoy it the same way. Oh, but but there's no snow unless you import it in. (laughs) You need to get some snow blowers out there, or head head. You could go east to Colorado, I guess, a little bit. Yeah. Anyway, Greg Perry, I tell you folks, if you don't know who I'm talking to, man, he's a legend in songwriting. Songs with the chairman of the board, like "Paid to the Piper," "Somebody's Been Sleeping in My Bed." Uh, I know was a hundred proof aged and soul that that did that song. Greg, what else have you done? I mean, I've went on BMI's website, and you've got like six, seven pages of songs. Well, what? My first, my first million seller was uh, written with General, and that was um, somebody sleeping in my bed. But my biggest record today was writ- was done on the Honeycomb one ads, and we sold three million on them. And Taylor Dane sold three million copies, and several people have. Uh, we've had over seven or eight uh, samples on that particular record. We just had a million seller on the on the Mary Mary. They did it, uh, a song called Heaven. Right. So I've had several. I mean, I, it's hard to think about Frida Payne, <laughs> uh, Bring the Boys Home. That was a million seller. Uh, I've, I've worked with some major artists, Minnie Ripperton, uh, Etta James, uh, different different artists. So uh, I, <laughs> I really don't look at it a lot. Of, I, my discography a lot of times, I just you know just keep doing it right you've done it and i know i've written some of your stuff in researching that you your career somewhat i guess started with chess uh, uh records started with chess when i was 17 years old a guy named billy davis uh the a and r director there and vice president gave me a job they gave me the opportunity to work there and that's where it started at chess records i i did uh things for people like billy stewart uh, etta james and the delves and all those people were there Man, you have worked with some great talent through the years. It's incredible. Uh, what what brought you into the music or entertainment industry? It's amazing at seventeen to be at Chess Records because me today thinking of the entertainment business, it's it and I guess it was then too. So hard to break into. What what got you up into that point? Well, it, really, it it was easier then. It was an easier time then. I mean, you could walk into a radio station if you had a record. And you could walk into them and ask them to play it, and they'd play it right there. Getting into the business was, was easy also for me in the sense that my, my uncle was the original engineer for Motown. His name is Robert Bateman, and he also produced Motown's uh, one of their greatest hits, which was called Please, Mr. Postman. He wrote and produced that. Uh, actually, it's a song that was number one, the only song under the Billboard charts that was number one on three separate artists. That's the Beatles, uh, Marvelettes. And the Carpenters. Wow. And so my uncle was the producer at, at Motown and a, and a writer and an engineer. And so we, in the early days, when I was 10 and 11 years old, I got a chance to go around uh, people like Smokey Robinson and Barry Gordy and Mary Wells. And I met them and even played ping pong with them. Wow. And that was, that was an opening to, for me. And that gave me the opportunity to realize that they're just human beings just like myself. And my grandfather always told me, if one man can do it, so can you. Right. And that's what I did, you know. Exactly. That's amazing to sit there and listen to you mentioning all those names and, and your uncle doing it. Because, you know, I think back in the Motown day, it was being created. Music and things like that were being created in that Motown sound, even with the Holland Dozier and Holland sound and all that was being done. And I don't see that being done today like it was then. It's sort of like I, I mentioned this to somebody the other day, and you sort of might have thought of this, is that it seems nothing new is being created because we've been there. What do you think about that? Well, we, we have a word for it. We call it fast food music. The music today is a little, you know, it's, it, it's sort of hit and miss, and, and uh, it's not a whole lot of thought in it, and, uh, well, a lot of um, emotion in it. I mean, it's just, um, it's like we say, fast food music. And the music of, of, of the 60s and the 70s had, uh, it would make you laugh, make you cry, but it was a lot of thought put in those songs, uh, you know, in the lyrics and in the melodies. 
Right. I think one of the things I remember as talking to General when I was in the office a couple of times is he always talked about the lyric of a song and, and, and I guess how that's created. General was excellent. He was one of the top uh, writers as far as the lyrics was concerned. In fact, General, that was his basic uh, expertise. But General also he wrote melodies and lyrics, so he was all around. But uh, he took his time with his, with his, with his lyrics and uh, made them... Uh, understandable for most people right what well, my next question to all that i guess that brings us up to this is what was it like writing with general because i know holland dozier and holland sort of had a way of writing and the way they put things together well writing with general was easy i mean first of all we we, we it was like love at first sight when we got together we, we we clicked the first night we met we got together that night and we wrote till the next morning and wrote about five songs that same night so it was, it was easy, but once we got cooking, General was a high energy guy. Right. Uh, it was like being on a roller coaster because he was always moving, you know, always. What was it like writing with the Holland Dozier and Holland thing? I know I heard an interview uh, not too long ago on BBC, and they were talking about the writing style and how they put the. I don't know if it's just the writing style, the, but with the production and and the producing of it all, and how it came together. Well. Some, back some time ago, I had thought about putting together a video and called, naming it the assembly line because that is the way that they uh, wrote and produced records. Sometimes they would, somebody would come up with a track, and then they, you would put a lyric, uh, come up with a title. Uh, another person would finish the lyrics off. So everybody had a particular job. And uh, so we tried to adapt that same style uh, with General, myself, and a guy named Angelo Bond. Right. And we, we tried to adapt that same style, and it worked well. And now we're going to go up to the next question. I know you guys wrote the song Bittersweet together. What do you think about the Kanye West, John Mayer version that has been out in the last few years? Uh, I, I think it's very interesting. I like, I love Kanye West, and I also love John Mayer. I mean, I, I play his records all the time. When I'm jogging, I play John Mayer all the time. <laughs> uh, so uh, I, I love his style of writing. I was really, I was really impressed, and I was really uh, happy with the way they did it. I, I think it is a great twist on the on, on the bittersweet itself. Myself, it is. It, it definitely was. On our fan page on Facebook, on our radio site fan page, we posted uh, a question: What would you like us to ask uh, Greg Perry? So, Greg, here is a question from one of our listeners, and and this is what they wanted your thoughts on. Uh, okay. The first part of it is, they said, today's music lacks the feel-good sound and lyrics, romantic, life-is-good feel sound uh, of the day of writing back in the Motown era. Here is their question. What would you attribute to the decline in today's music, they feel? Well, I would probably say, um, well, it begins with radio. Radio, you know, they have a pattern uh, as to what they're going to play. And basically, radio has narrowed down what they play. Uh, back in the 60s and 70s, you had a variety of music. You would have uh, the stylist with their ballads, their pretty ballads, You Made Me Feel Brand New, those kind of things. And then you would have somebody like Johnny Taylor doing Who's Making Love with Your Old Lady. So you had a wide variety of music. Well, what happens is radio has narrowed that variety of music down to just a particular uh, uh, genre. Uh, and if it doesn't sound like that, then it doesn't get played. I think you have to give a lot of uh, fault. You, they carry a lot of the weight uh, because they, they, you can't get played if you don't, you know if they don't play you. You can't you, you know you can't get heard. Exactly, and it's sort of about talking what we did earlier about the early days of the creation of music and that sort of thing. And I guess radio at that time was was in that too with the creation of radio. And I think like what was it in the early 80s is when they started separating radio stations and genres of music. You have top 40, adult, contemporary, and country. So it, it, they've separated it all, sort of like what you were saying. Well, it's separated, but it's still very narrow. The only group that is able to play different kind of music is country. If right. you do country, you can play up tempo uh, ballads, you can sing all kinds of songs. So country is still, right now, they're still putting out songs that are warm, tender, and happy, and, and, and uh, all kinds of music, you know? True, true. I, I would see that. I've, I've heard somebody say the other day, I was at a meeting, and they said that, you know, our country music today, talking about country music, is what our rock and roll was of the 70s. 
Absolutely. I love country. It, Always have. Well, it still has a melody to it. You're right, somewhat. <laughs> With it out and, and, a, and a meaning to the song or the lyrics of a song, really. They write the best lyrics, anyway. Greg Perry, I appreciate it so much you taking your time out of your day to to talk with us on the show and give us some insight to what it was like working with General and the Holland Dozier Holland Days. And it's amazing listening to you go back about your uncle and the Motown and all that. It's it's just incredible. And ho- we, hopefully we can have you on again soon and talk with you more about uh, your career and what's going on now. It's my pleasure, and I would love to do it. All right. Well, Greg, we'll see you on December the 30th at the House of Blues in Myrtle Beach. Uh, for the chairman of the board remembers General Johnson. Greg Perry, thank you again so much. Thank you. Bye now. Darren and Anita on Grand Strand, a music evolution.